Hello, everyone out there in Radio Land. This is the CHS Weekly Report. I am your host, Mr. Robert Blumenthal, CHS Assistant Principal. This afternoon, I have the honor and privilege of speaking with members of the CHS family production of The Never Ending Story. Hello and welcome, everybody. Hello. Students, the questions in this show are hard-hitting, fast, and furious. So the first question (laughs) is easily... Perhaps most, perhaps the most challenging question that you've ever been asked. Oh dear! One at a time. Please tell me your name and what grade you are in. Uh, Go. Uh. <laughs> uh, I'm Kyvan McClure, and I am a senior. Nathaniel Carpentier, senior. Olivia Vogel, senior. And Abby McCarthy, senior. <laughs> nice Goodbye. Job. Nice start. <laughs> nice Goodbye. Start. Sudden buckets. Yeah. So from. From now on, everything is downhill. We had to get the difficult things out of the way. So we don't pull any punches in the CHS Weekly Report, as you can see. So tell us a little more about the the production. So first, when is the production of Never Ending Story? Let's start with the facts. So it is the last weekend of February, the 24th, 25th, and the 26th. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. Where is the CHS production of the Never Ending Story? At our auditorium. Here at Chesterton High School. Yes. That it is. So three shows uh, over that weekend? Yes. Overall? Yes. Outstanding. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so for those of you who are, let's say, Gen X, millennials, <laughs> that's really like, as parents, this is a film that was really, really important to your childhood, and I'll be honest my childhood growing up in the 1980s so is this essentially is it a a theatrical adaptation of the movie or is it or do i have that backwards or the play came first then the film it's so it was originally a book um it was a german book oh um by um what's his name enda michael Mm -hmm. Ende. michael ende and so then it was turned into a movie in the 80s and then there was a play adaptation afterwards. Early so, 2000s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's a mix between both. So like it's a lot more based on the book because what the family theater is about is promoting reading within the elementary schools. Mm-hmm. And But the, we do take some costume inspiration from the movie. We do take some character play from the movie. I see. So, okay. I'm glad I asked because <laughs> I. it makes sense that it was a – a novel or a book first mm-hmm. it's in the title mm-hmm. yeah. but it's okay that's good to know but then it's interesting that the play adaptation came in in the 2000s be, that's that's about right as mm-hmm. you know gen x gets older <laughs> you know get, come in adults they think to themselves you know what i like this this movie changed my life as a young kid and i <laughs> cried buckets when some sad things happened i want <laughs> to experience that on stage and so <laughs> they yeah. A, yeah. A, a theater production so yeah that, that tracks so um thank you for that little bit of history lesson and explanation so mm-hmm. i don't want to give anything away hopefully um, not by asking but um your parts to play in uh, the upcoming show that takes place at the end of next month mm. So, uh, speaking of sad things that happen, I play Artax the horse. Um, <laughs> wow, I should not have started with <laughs> you, Kai. But he, uh, hey, all right. he does speak, though, this time, so it's much more engaging. Okay. So, He's right. a talking mm-hmm. horse. He's a talking I horse. I also do play Bastion's dad. All right, all right. Less traumatic? Sure. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, I play the werewolf Gamork, so... That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> and I also play one of the wind giants. Okay. The word you're looking for is terrifying. Because, again, <laughs> like, young, Gamork impressionable, impressionable <laughs> that film. Whew. Gave you nightmares. Uh, yeah. Sure did. <laughs> you're going to be excited for this. <laughs> uh, I play Atreyu. Fantastic. Uh, <laughs> about me. Um, <laughs> So I'm a voice of a teacher off stage. I am a member of Maya's entourage, and I'm stage managing for the production. Okay, so a lot of hats. So tying this all together, had you seen the film before auditioning or maybe after you've auditioned? At some point, had you seen the actual the film? So, yes, I did watch the movie a little after auditioning. I knew it was a big part of so many people's lives, so I figured watching the movie, just being able to get a sense of that, uh, I watched it. It was a good movie. I can see why people liked it. 
Uh, I do personally like to play more. I feel like the play is a little bit more engaging and emotional than the movie might be. Oh, more oh. emotional. I yeah. honestly yeah. think it might be more emotional. Better be there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I'm, okay, I'll take your word for it. Uh, I had not. Wait. <laughs> uh, we read the script in late October. After that, I had seen the movie, which was right before auditioning. Mm-hmm. But I had not seen it before that. Okay. I have at no point read the book or seen the movie. <laughs> Sure. Um, so actually, when I was a little kid, apparently this was one of my favorite movies ever. So and your, your parents are doing it right. Yeah, yeah. So my mom always thought that Falcor was a dog, and <laughs> <laughs> for some reason. Um, but like, grew up, kind of forgot that I ever saw the movie. Then Stranger Things happened mm-hmm. with the never-ending story. Yep. Which is why everyone is like, "Oh, that sounds familiar," and then we did the read-through, and then it like brought it all back. Sure. Okay. Yeah, thank you again, Stranger Things, for mm-hmm. bringing 80s culture back. my childhood <laughs> back to uh, the present tense. Outstanding. Okay, good to know. So, how? So, as seniors, is this your first product family theater production, or your fourth, or second, or third? Any one of the, or seventh? I don't know. <laughs> so I am the novice of the bunch here. <laughs> this is my second family theater production. I was in last year's The Stinky Cheese Man. This is my fourth. I've been acting in the family theater production since Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Okay. Uh, this is also my fourth year in the family theater production. Yeah, this is this is my last one as well. Mm-hmm. I've been doing it since freshman year. Okay. And I got one more show after this for <laughs> spring. Good. So three veterans and a and a rookie here. That's great. So <laughs> rookie. <laughs> That's okay. So what about what about this show? Are you excited about bringing to the CHS stage? I know it sounds like you're really into it, but mm-hmm. what what are you? I think most looking forward to the audience experiencing. Um. I think we have a great cast of actors. Um, the costumes are going to be great. I'm really looking forward to people seeing just the amount of dialogue that we'll have with each other and the amount of motion we convey through that dialogue. I'm mostly looking forward to like showing everybody how awesome our costumes are going to look like. Mm-hmm. Some of them are going to be so outlandishly big and amazing. Uh, I'm really excited because there are a lot of like special theater effects that are like virtually impossible to do. Some very complicated things, and uh, you know, figuring out how to portray those on stage live is just—it's a lot of fun. I I'm mixed between all these guys pretty much because I took a break from acting to stage manage, and I get to see everything come together and have a big hand in making things come to life. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's just going to be most exciting to see everything at the end come together for the big final project, because we have a lot of big things coming that we're working on today and tomorrow. Great. Oh, it sounds so so exciting. I think the the costuming and the scale of things, Mm -hmm. I think, is really Mm -hmm. reflected in the film, Mm -hmm. how some of the characters physically are gigantic, and others are tiny, 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 Mm -hmm. and so having that scale um, on the stage, I think, would be really cool, Mm -hmm. whether Mm -hmm. through costumes or special effects and all that, I think that would be really uh, exciting that our, the audience will be able to experience some of that, too. Neat. Mm -hmm. Is there going to be a uh, a matinee? Are we bringing in the the elementary school students again? I see a lot of head nods, so great, Mm -hmm. so tell me more about that. So, (laughs) for those of you listening at home or on your smart speaker, anywhere on planet earth what uh what is that the matinee what what, explain more about that so the uh, third grade matinee is where we take all the third graders in the Dunan school district and we take them on a field trip to the auditorium and they get to see the show for free i believe Mm -hmm. yeah yeah they come in and then we sit down we sit them in the auditorium and they get to watch this excellent performance and we do a little q a thing with them after and all that Mm -hmm. You guys tell some of the more special things about it. After the Q&A and the performance, we take them on a tour of like how the magic happens, like backstage, mm-hmm. prop shop, up in the booth where tech works with the cues, the lighting. Uh, it's just, it's a really special experience because uh, because they're like so young and don't really have like trained like live performance etiquette. They're like, you know, gasping and like yelling and it's it's so it's a very engaged audience and you just love to hear it as an actor yeah 
And for the parents at home, they get a free ticket afterwards Ooh. to bring some people back to the show with them for some of our performances the next couple of days after. Oh, good. I think that's a, a great way to market and, and increase mm. uh, attendance at the show. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. Thinking back, again, to my childhood and the film specifically. So who is your favorite character in any of them? Caveat, it cannot be the one that you are playing. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! Hmm. My, me personally, I think that um, Gamork might be probably one of my favorite characters. You know, I haven't really met the actor who played him at all, but uh, he's. Uh, <laughs> I've heard he's pretty good. I've heard he's pretty good. Um, I'm a big fan of villain characters, uh, <laughs> which is why I auditioned for the role I auditioned for. But I can't say that. <laughs> uh, so my favorite character is probably got to be Falcor. Yeah. Uh, I'm also a really big fan of Falcor, but I, I just love uh, Professor Engiwook. Engiwook. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> is that the little guy? That's the scientist uh, at the end of the movie. That yeah, has yeah, like yeah. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. tiny. He's, he's a he's scientist a, he's a guy. He's the gnome. <laughs> the gnome man. Yes. Yeah, who yeah. gets the scientist who gets in the film. I'm not spoiling the film. Mm. I, I can't spoil the film. It's been <laughs> 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> so by this time, hey. So it is the scientist. He's Again, he's tiny uh -huh. who gets a Treyu through the Southern Oracle. Is that that yeah. guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's him. That's him. Right. Check. Yeah. The one and only. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite character, hot take, probably a Grommel. She okay. Mm -hmm. I have been horrified <laughs> of like horrified. Like I've just started gaining the confidence to kill spiders, <laughs> just as a senior. I like she terrified me. And how we're gonna do her on stage as well? And our like we have a Gwen who's mm -hmm. absolutely wonderful at playing a Grommel. Um, like between all those different aspects, I love her. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, fascinating. Okay, great. I think that I think that this show is it ties in with people's nostalgia mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. for like things that used to be because as parents it had such an impact and I think you're going to be able to pass that on to mm -hmm. to another generation especially since the never ending story that film and we're not talking about the other one that there's a sequel not, yeah, no, not, no 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 there, wait there's that. a sequel which yeah, is our, no there no really there is which, yeah. <laughs> i think it's, it's our director's really favorite bad. movie though <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> all right anyway okay the it's it, what's interesting is that the even before stranger things had that callback mm -hmm. to the never ending story as a film it was is still such a huge pop culture yeah. thing mm -hmm. given how films in at that time for children mm -hmm. this is a children's movie have such extreme like highs and lows where it's not just a, a, a scary wolf villain thing that is coming but also a moment where the main character has to dodge laser beams from gigantic, um, you know, sphinxes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sphinxes. Yeah. With, with, yeah, yeah. So there's, a, and there's a lot, and then certainly, you know, the, the you know, the, the animal um, experiences that are the highs yeah. and lows, and mm -hmm. and so that I think that is something that will, I think, will really resonate with, you know, the audience and 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 their and their families. Yeah. Is that is that something that you have talked about um, as you're developing and working through the play? That's kind a of. a long question. We, we talked a lot about like kind of the conceptual ideas that a lot of the characters have come from, but we haven't really talked about the impact. And like, as we're kind of going, the more I'm kind of realizing that the stinky cheese man <laughs> post COVID was to get people back into the theater mm -hmm. and back into live performances. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of let's do big, crazy, fantastical things mm -hmm. to peak interest. And now we're at the stage with the never ending story of going back to those childhood classics mm -hmm. that people enjoyed. So it's like we've had the, the big, crazy, wild experience and then going back to the nostalgia feel that family theater is all about. Nice. So like with this theater production, we don't want people to come in and just watch a play. We want them to come in and actually lose themselves in this. Forget they're sitting in a seat watching this play. We want them to get like 
involved with these characters, get emotionally attached to them, and feel what they're feeling, and you know, feel the despair they are. Yeah. Uh, we just want to toy with your emotions. <laughs> it's, we just want to mess with you. Mm-hmm. This is a show that makes that makes that dream come true. Yeah. We have talked about how there are differences mm-hmm. between the book and the film. There, in your opinion, the play is more closely aligned to the book as its you know original source material. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But visually you're relying on a lot of the film for for a lot of that Mm -hmm. totally tracks that makes sense yeah in the film Mm -hmm. again i am not spoiling a 40 year old film (laughs) bastion (laughs) is responsible for allowing for the the world of dreams that exists to continue because it's his imagination that is keeping it going if you had the opportunity to meet Falcor, the luck dragon, not a dog, the luck dragon, <laughs> what is something that you would do if you had that opportunity? Like a place to go or like just a thing to do? Let's go place to go, thing to do. Let's do right. a bit of both. Okay. So if I had the luck dragon and I can go anywhere, definitely would go on like, American Ninja Warrior <laughs> or like The Voice or something like that. Something that takes a lot of skill and just luck myself along. And then thing I would do is go to a store and then just buy lottery tickets mm-hmm. and invest them in the CHS Family Theater, I promise. I promise. Uh-huh. 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 That was a very politically correct answer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. I'd probably like travel, see some stuff, like go to different countries, different continents. Uh, run for president, maybe. <laughs> Ooh. There you go. I yeah. vote for you. <laughs> vote for Gamork. <laughs> a vote for Gamork. Yeah, that's right. A vote for Gamork is a vote for Atreyu's death. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I think, let's see, I would honestly probably just, like, go flying around on Falcor, like, all the time. Like, t- no gas money? Heck yeah. <laughs> just all the cheesy, like, yeah. fists in the air. Yeah. Like, stop uh, frame. Uh, like. <laughs> yeah. Don't you. I, I would probably, like, this is going to sound very existentially of me, I would probably just go away. Like, I would go to another world and hang out and chill and not have to be a person or think about things. There you go. You're like sleeping on I a cloud. Would, like sleeping on a cloud, protecting the environment, fighting the patriarchy. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> we're just, we're doing things that are not on this planet. So Outstanding. After hearing people's answers, I think I misunderstood the question. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was your, that was your that, thing of having a luck dragon. That not is, at all. <laughs> that's the risk of being the first to yeah. speak. <laughs> so. Not at all. You set the tone and we changed it. <laughs> we totally betrayed okay. you. Final question. Ready? Final, final question. Yes. Final, yes. final question. Will there be a, a random like E.T. other like 80s reference that took place in the film that like you would also like to recreate. And I'll give you, I'll tell you what I mean. In the never ending story of the movie, in the, the, the shot where all of the different creatures are meeting and, and waiting to hear from the childlike empress, off like in the background is E.T., mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Or like, mm-hmm. is there that opportunity in the play? So, I don't think it's in the script yet, but mm-hmm. for those who have seen Family Theater Productions, we do a chase scene oh God. for intermission. <laughs> no. So that may or may not be a good part to put in a couple of 80s references, like the Terminator, mm-hmm. E.T., the little gremlin guys. There we go. Enough said. Yeah. Stay tuned. There might be another chance uh, for Maya's entourage. We could sneak a few monsters in there from the 80s. <laughs> like Gremlins. Thriller yeah. Thriller Dance. Some Thriller Gremlins Dance. Thriller Dance. Just saying. Just saying. Yeah. Well, if that does not whet your appetite to attend the CHS Theater family production of The Never Ending Story, uh, which, what are the dates? One last time in February? The 24th, the 25th, and the 26th. Be there or be square. This was the CHS Weekly Report. Thank you. Good night. And good luck. Woo! Fa- Woo! Family theater. Awesome.